time assalamu alaikum this is radio pakistan the news read by hassan gilani first the headlines do not qualify for dialogue punjab igp has urged people not to fall prey to false propaganda of violence narendra modi led fascist indian government is continuing its colonial policies to punish the pro freedom people in pakistan over the next 6 months Pakistan will face Malaysia in semi-final. Prime Minister Mohammad Shahab Nawaz tweeted today he said many political and constitutional breakthroughs occurred when political leaders sat across the table to craft a consensus. The Prime Minister however said there is a difference that the anarchists held to account for their militant actions and this is prevalent practice even in the developed democracies. Prime Minister Mohammad Shahbaz Sharif has felicitated Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan on his re-election in the office on third term. In a telephonic conversation with President Erdogan, the Prime Minister said, "During the last two decades under his leadership, Turkey has made remarkable progress." He expressed his belief that under the wise leadership of Recep Tayyip Erdogan, Turkey will play a more effective role. for peace and stability in the islamic world shahbaz sharif expressed his desire of early holding of the 7th meeting of high level strategic cooperative council of the two countries president dr arif alvi has said that holding of national games in balochistan reflects that it is a peaceful province he said this while addressing the concluding ceremony of 34th national games at ayub stadium in quetta this afternoon the president felicitated the government of balochistan for organizing successful national games in the province he said all possible steps have been taken for the betterment of the province Dr Arif Alvi stressed the youth of Balochistan to take a positive role in the development of the province. Senators belonging to Pakistan Tehreek-e-Insaf have strongly condemned the sad incidents that took place on 9th of May. Talking to newsmen in Islamabad today, Senator Dilawar Khan said, "Armed forces are our pride and the whole nation stands behind them." He demanded to bring the culprits of May 9 tragic incidents before the nation and awarding them strict punishment. In his remarks, Senator Hilal Rahman said that the unfortunate incidents of May 9 are condemned and there is no room for people in our society who were involved in it chairman board of trustees of the accounting and auditing organization for islamic financial institutions sheikh ibrahim bin khalifa al khalifa called on finance minister isaq tar in islamabad today they exchanged views on enhancing mutual collaboration in social welfare business and financial sectors and promoting islamic finance industry and capital market in pakistan The Australian High Commissioner to Pakistan Neil Hawkins called on Punjab Governor Muhammad Baligh Rahman in Lahore today. Promotion of bilateral relations in education, agriculture and other sectors were discussed during the meeting. The Australian High Commissioner expressed desire for more bilateral cooperation in livestock, dairy, science and technology. On the occasion the Punjab Governor said that Australian companies have vast opportunities to invest in infrastructure development renewable energy agriculture and mining of pakistan he also lauded the australian government's steps to award more scholarships to pakistani students Inspector General of Police Punjab Dr Usman Anwar says false propaganda is being made of violence against arrested women who were involved in May 9 incidents addressing a news conference in Lahore today the IGP said fake posts related to arrested women are circulating on social media he said a person is arrested by the police only after fulfilling the legal requirements and miscreants are arrested after verification from nadra and other records This is Radio Pakistan. Federal Minister for Information Technology and Telecom Syed Aminul Haq has reached Casablanca city of Morocco to attend 
Gitex Africa Digital Summit. The three-day Gitex Africa Digital Summit will begin tomorrow. Sayyid Aminul Haq will share the Digital Pakistan vision, his perspective on the current challenges and the next frontier of innovation. In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the Indra Modi-led fascist Indian government is continuing with its colonial policies to punish pro-freedom people and organizations for their role in ongoing Kashmir freedom movement and a sealed civilian property worth 40 million rupees in Kupwara district. The regime has mobilized its dreaded oppressive machinery, including the state investigation agency, to dislodge the Kashmiris from their properties. Meanwhile, incarcerated senior APHC leader Shabir Ahmad Shah in a message from New Delhi's infamous Tihar jail denounced raids, cordon and search operations, arrests, seizure of properties and other brutalities, saying that New Delhi is using these brutal measures to silence the legitimate political voices for freedom. The United Nations has warned that some 22 countries, including Pakistan, will see an increase in acute food insecurity over the next six months. A new early warning report issued by World Food Programme and the Food and Agriculture Organization calls for urgent attention to save both lives and livelihoods. The report identified 18 hotspots with Afghanistan, Nigeria, Somalia, South Sudan and Yemen placed at the highest alert level and Haiti, Burkina Faso, Mali and Sudan elevated to the highest concerns level. Pakistan, the Central African Republic, Ethiopia, Kenya, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Syria and Myanmar were described as hotspots of very high concern. Russia-Ukraine war intensified as drone attacks targeted Kyiv and Moscow today. Russia has accused Ukraine of launching drone attack on Moscow, hitting residents of President Putin first time. In a statement, Russian Defense Ministry said Kyiv used at least eight drones and inflicted minor damage to several buildings. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has denied Kyiv's involvement in the attack. On the other hand, blasts were heard in Kyiv and several buildings were set ablaze after Russia targeted Ukraine's capital for the third night. At least one person was killed in the attacks. China has declined a U.S. invitation for a meeting between Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin and his Beijing's counterpart Li Shangfu to hold military dialogue regarding Taiwan and other issues in Singapore. In a statement, the U.S. side should in a statement, the U.S. side should immediately correct its wrong policies, show sincerity, create necessary atmosphere and conditions for dialogue and communication between the two militaries. In northern Cameroon, unknown gunmen have killed four people. Military sources said unidentified assailants killed two customs officers, a policeman and a civilian on a security post in Mora town. Pakistan will face Malaysia in the semi-final of Men's Junior Asia Cup Hockey Tournament at Salala in Oman tomorrow. Pakistan beat Japan by 3-2 to qualify for the semi-final of the event. And finally, the weather. Wind, dust and thunderstorm rain with few hailstorms and isolated heavy falls is expected in Punjab, Khabar Pakhtunkhwa, Kilgit Baltistan and Kashmir during the next 12 hours. And this is the end of the news. For more news and analysis, log on to our website radio.gov.pk and also watch live video streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com slash Radio Pakistan News Official.